Hey guys, James here from eBay's Guitar, and in today's bass guitar lesson, I'm gonna show you how to break down the Stevie Wonder classic, Isn't She Lovely, into three core ideas. If you're a beginner to intermediate bass player, make sure you check out this lesson all the way to the end. Hey guys, it's James here from eBay's Guitar and today I'm filming this lesson on my birthday. So what I thought I'd do is take the opportunity to share one of my all time favorite songs to play on the bass guitar. And that is Isn't She Lovely by Stevie Wonder. Students can go off and get quite inhibited by this bass part because it's very, very busy. But what you can do is you can break it down and simplify it into three core sections. So that's what I'm gonna show you exactly how to do today. If you're in the early stages of playing the bass guitar, this is one of these songs which you may well see if you're looking to get out there and jam with other musicians. You may see it as a straight pop song with a vocalist. You may see it as more of a jazz tune or an instrumental tune which is designed more for soloing over. Or you may see guys like Victor Wooten using it as a solo bass vehicle. So it's a super versatile form once you get to know it. So what I'm gonna do is show you what we're gonna cover today, first of all. So guys, just before we hit the lesson content today, I want you to know that there's a completely free PDF which comes with this lesson today, where you can see everything we're discussing written out in standard notation and tab. You can grab your copy by clicking the link in the description below. Also, if you want to grab the backing track that we're using today, this is available as part of the Bass Lab Plus membership over at ebassguitar.com. If you want to join the Bass Lab Plus, there is a link in the description below where you can join free today with a 14 day trial. So as I said right at the beginning of the lesson, we can break Isn't She Lovely down into three core ideas. The first idea that we need to discuss is the rhythmic groove of feel, which is running throughout the whole of the tune. The second idea we need to discuss is the 16 bar chord sequence, which is running throughout the whole of this tune. And then the third idea is the two bar unison phrase, which happens at the end of every 16 bar sequence. So let's talk about the fundamental groove or rhythmic feel, which is running throughout Isn't She Lovely. This is based on a groove or feel called the shuffle. And this typically sounds like this. And what creates that particular sound is dividing each beat or each beat subdivisions into three. So if this is our rhythmic, our pulse, so one, two, three, four, what we are doing is we're going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you have these groupings of three running within every beat. You might also hear these referred to as triplets. So make sure you go back to the original and listen to it and count groupings of three throughout the tune and you'll hear how that works. But how we translate that into our basic bass groove is like this. So one, like that. And this is very, very simple and very, very straightforward to begin with. So this is just simply a note on beat one of the bar and a note on beat three of the bar. So you could simplify even down to this. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But what we want to do to get that shuffle feel in there is place a note on the last triplet of the second beat. So one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, what I suggest first of all is just singing that groove to begin with and playing it along with the original track just on one note to begin with so you can see how that feels. And that is our fundamental rhythmic groove to begin with. So let's talk about the chord sequence which is running throughout the whole of Isn't She Lovely. And the brilliant thing about this is it's one 16 bar chord sequence. But what we can do is we can split that 16 bar chord sequence down into two eight bar sections like so. So we are in the key of E major, but we start on a C sharp minor and we have this chord sequence. So C sharp minor, 
F sharp nine, B11, E. And then we do exactly the same thing again. So C sharp minor seven, F sharp minor, or F9, B11, and then E. So if you want to think of that in Roman numerals, that is just simply six, two, five, one chord sequence in the key of E repeated twice. So let's talk about the last eight bars of the sequence now. So what we do is we go up to an A chord, like so, which is chord four, and then down, we just drop down a half step after that to a G sharp, to a C sharp, minor seven, to an F sharp nine. So you could think of that chord sequence as chord four, chord three, chord six, chord two, like that. And then we end up with two bars of B11, which is chord five. And then we go back and resolve to chord one, like that. And then the unison phrase comes through. So let me play the last eight bars. So we end up with A sharp major, to G sharp, to C sharp, to F sharp like that, and then to two bars of B11, and then to chord one like that, which is the E. So let's play the whole of the sequence through. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put the groove that we discussed earlier to it, so you can hear how this sounds in concept. So it's one, two, three, four. To F sharp, to B11, to E. To C sharp minor, to F sharp nine, to B11, to E, to chord A, to G sharp, to C sharp minor seven, to F sharp nine, to two bars of B11, to chord one. Ba 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 da ba ba da bam bam. So what I'm going to do now is play that in context with the backing track, so you can hear what it sounds like. So the last thing we need to know which happens at the end of every 16 bar sequence is this two bar unison phrase which sounds like this. So it's one, two. And this is quite a technical challenge. So what I suggest you do is start it slowly and use it as a little technique exercise and work it up over time. It's really, really satisfying when you can get it up to tempo. Now this phrase is fundamentally based on the E major pentatonic. So that is the first thing to practice. So these are our fundamental notes. So it's E, F sharp, G sharp, B, C sharp, and E like that. And what I suggest you do is play it one finger per fret to begin with, starting on a second finger, starting on a fourth finger, first finger, fourth finger, first finger, fourth finger. And practice that up and down to begin with, because that is our fundamental pattern within it. But what it does is it sticks two extra notes on the beginning. So it starts on a B below. So we have a B and a C sharp below like that. So that can happen on the second and the fourth finger. So we end up with this going on. So just practice that in isolation to begin with. So two, four, two, four, one, four, one, four. Okay, now let's put the rhythm to it. And this is where this triplet feel is really, really important because what we're doing is we're dividing each beat by three. So what happens is this phrase actually starts just after the second beat of the bar. So we end up with one, two, like this. So it's one, two, and then on the second and third triplets, the phrase starts. So it's two, and then we go into straight triplets after that. So it's two and a one and a two and a, like that. So one, ba, 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 ba. I'll try that again. Mm. So 
two up. So make sure you just really feel that one, two, three, one, two, three going on between every beat. So it's one, two. And then at the end of it, we just have two E's, which are both straight quarter notes. So we go. So actually you end up playing three E's together, but I like to think of those last two as separates because they happen on beat one and two of the next bar. So just start it really slowly to begin with and then speed it up. So it's one, two. And again, one, two. One, two. I suggest playing this with one finger per fret technique, but what I actually do sometimes is play one, four, one, four, and then I will stretch my first finger back there, back into one finger per fret technique. So four over three for the first two notes, and then one finger per fret like this. So, Let's play this now in context with the track. And so you can hear me playing the fundamental groove. You can hear the chord sequence working and then you can hear the unison phrase at the end of the sequence. Guys, if you're enjoying this lesson, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus membership. Bass Lab Plus is a step-by-step -step program for beginner to intermediate bass players, which teaches you everything you need to know if you want to join the worship team, you want to play in a covers band on a Friday night, you want to go to a jam session, or if you simply want to rock out at home to your favorite tracks on YouTube. There are also some brand new options there where you can get coached personally by myself. So if you're looking to push your bass playing onto the next level, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus. There is a link in the description below. So to finish this lesson off, I want to show you how I would go about starting to improvise bass lines on the three core elements that we've discussed so far. Everything basically that I would use to improvise on this tune is 100% based on walking bass concepts. Because really, this is a jazz tune which is based on the circle of fifths chord sequence. So there are loads of ideas if you've studied walking bass that you can directly apply to this tune. So let's talk about the two note chromatic transition. And what this is, this is all about approaching the next chord from two half steps above. So if we are playing a C sharp minor seven chord like that, and we are going to the F sharp nine like that, what we are gonna do is we are gonna approach from two chromatic notes above. So we're gonna approach using a G sharp, a G natural, and an F sharp. And how we're gonna place those rhythmically is we're gonna place those on the last true triplets of each bar. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four. So that is the second and third triplet of the fourth beat. So what it sounds like is in like this. So one, ba -dum, bum, ba -bum, and what we can do is we can build this idea out over the whole of the chord sequence. So to approach the B11 chord, we could approach from a C sharp, a C natural, and a B like that. So we end up with this idea. And then to get to the E chord, we could approach from an F sharp, an F natural, and land on the E like this. And then to get back to the C sharp minor, we could go from a D sharp, a D natural, to a C sharp like that. So I'm just gonna put that across the four bars at the front of the chord sequence. So. perfectly. Now we could go into the A major from two notes above, so or two half steps above, which would be B, 
A sharp A like that. So one, two, three. And then into the G sharp, we could go from two uh, half steps above like that. And then into the C sharp, we could go, which would be a D sharp, D natural, C sharp. Into the F sharp like that, and hit the final two bars of B11, which would be this. But, um, and then you just repeat it again. Hitting that, and then we would go into the unison run. So let me play it by itself so you can hear what that idea sounds like. So. So absolutely everything I've discussed there is written out in the completely free PDF which comes with this lesson. There is a link in the description below. So there are literally loads and loads of ideas that you could try over this. So I really suggest jumping over to ebassguitar.com and checking out the Essential Walking Bass course because that will give you so many ideas how you could start improvising over this chord sequence. To finish off the lesson, I'm gonna take the track and play these ideas that I've just covered so you can hear the two note transition in action. Then I'm gonna start breaking out so you can see the sort of ideas that I would naturally play over this sequence on a gig. So guys, that's the end of today's bass guitar lesson. If you've enjoyed the lesson, make sure you download the completely free PDF which comes with this lesson so you can see absolutely everything we've discussed written out in standard notation and tab. There is a link in the description below. Also, if you're looking to push your bass playing onto the next level, make sure you jump over to ebassguitar.com and check out the Bass Lab Plus where there's a complete syllabus for the beginner to intermediate bass guitar player also, you can get coached by me too if you'd like more personal help. So make sure you click the link in the description below to check out the Bass Lab Plus. Cheers, I've been James from ebassguitar.com and I will catch you next time.